And we're told now that we have video from the moment the plane crashed. Oh. Uh, we're seeing this now for the first time. Let's, let's take a look. try to, uh, to to re rack that just to, to, to take another look it's obviously very far in the distance from where this video uh, was you don't actually as far as we can see mm -hmm. it, it does seem uh, that it came down relatively in a, in one area or at least the, the biggest part of it can't seem to have come come down in one area well judging from the the amount of flames that we saw at the point of impact uh, there was that was a large chunk probably yeah. and that that obviously is fuel going up when you get that color smoke and I mean one's tempted to want to pause for a moment just to realize the enormity and gravity of what we're looking at um, in this the plane will have been virtually fully fueled for the Amsterdam to Mm. Kuala Lumpur flight. Uh, the missile or whatever hit it clearly didn't destroy it in midair. There was sufficient for the tanks to have hit the ground. Uh, and do jump in, sir, when, if, if there's something more that you, you can add. Um, for the tanks to have exploded upon the ground. But what we're looking at there is. Yeah. And again, the question now, and, and we've heard uh, our Nick Pitt and Walsh reporting concerns from Ukrainian officials about their ability to actually get to the crash site. This is obviously essential that uh, officials get to the crash site, not only to get the black box, uh, to, to, to recover any other uh, items, uh, as we saw with the TWA Flight 800 investigation, which again happened. Uh, uh, this is the anniversary uh, of that uh, of that. Uh, plane crashing. Uh, that was a very lengthy uh, investigation where they basically reassembled uh, the aircraft to try to determine exactly uh, what had happened. Uh, again, uh, access to this site is going to be essential and it's not clear at this moment uh, exactly how that will occur.